All right, last class at the end, we did an intro video for assignment two, our, our fantasy creature composite. And we ended with a sketch and then starting to, based on some inspiration, I used Pokemon. And then I started to download some high quality reference images informed by my sketch. And the way they're informed by my sketch is that the angle on the anatomy has to, to work with the angle of my sketch so that the skeleton could all make sense, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those different references. Some of them are for the head, some of them are for the body, some of them are for the wings, some of them are for the tail. I have a lot more than five. And I'm going to move them into my assignment two folder. And then just like we did with the landscape, I'm going to show my view options within my folder, make the icons a little bit bigger, close the grid space, and then these inspiration images, I'm going to select and label with a color. I'm going to make them red. So the red is my inspiration. My sketches, I'll just uh, just leave as they are. And now I want to label the things that I think are the head I want to use. I don't need the copy. Because I'm going to show you how we can arrange things now by color, by their tag. So all my reds are here, and now all these no tag items show all 12. These are the, the references. So now I want to say, okay, well, what's the head? So this is one I have for the head, so I'm going to make that gray. What else for the head? This snake for the head, make that gray. What else for the head? Uh, I wanted the fish fin. These were, were things I was thinking of for the head. And I kind of liked this tassel that came from a fish lure. Remember, you don't have to only use animals. So all these gray items shows up at the top. That's for the head. That's five things just for the head I might end up compositing together. And I just need five things total. Now for the body. Well, for the chest, I want to use this bat. So I'm going to do purple. And then for the wings, I might do, oh, this was also for the head, these eyes. Make that gray. For the wings, I was going to use maybe some combination of these two. So that's also part of the body. And then we have the back legs, so that's also part of the body. And then we have the tail. And the tail, let's make that blue. Actually, let's avoid blue. No, blue's fine. Okay. So the tail, the head, the body. and then the inspiration. Now my main inspiration is my sketch. So I'm gonna go back to my sketch and I'm gonna open it up in Photopea because we're the freeware version of the class. But you can do this with Photoshop as well. Just make sure when you use Photoshop, you're signed into your account. You do that with the help features at the top. Just like Chrome says help here, you would do that with Photoshop or any Adobe product and you'll see where you can sign in or sign out. Okay, with Photo P, I'm going to drag in my sketch, which is already a PSD. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring guides to around my sketch. My sketch is already copied. It's already in Canvas. So I have that requirement covered. But now I'm going to bring guides framing my sketch. And then I'm going to crop down to those guides. This basically gives me the print space I need to print a portfolio image of my fantasy creature. Then what do I do? I need to make sure that I have the right resolution. And this, this got in the way of some of the first assignment, right? A lot of work was done and then at the end of the day it was only 72 pixels per inch and not over 300. So we want to start that by formatting it correctly from the beginning. Going to image, image size, changing pixels to inches and making sure that this dimension is larger than eight by 10. So I have 10 by 13. I'm just going to increase that to 11 by 14 inches. 
And then this is the most important number. As long as your inches are bigger than 8 by 10, you need this, the pixels per inch, to be at least 300. So I'm actually going to do, I'll just do 300. Larger than 8 by 10 and 300 pixels per inch. Now, this will always, Photo P will always show it in pixels rather than in inches. But that means it needs to be at least 3,000 by 4,000 pixels in total. And that's why we wanted reference that was each at least 1,000 by 1,000. So when you bring it in, like I bring in a head, that head's going to be plenty big enough to work in that resolution. All right, now before I do that, instead of just piling all my references on top of my sketch, I'm going to give myself some space to work. So to do that, I go to Image Canvas Size, and I'm going to grow around the center in inches and make it 30 inches by 40 inches. Not because I want your final project to fill that space, but so we have some working space for the cutting out and placing that we're going to do. 30 by 40 inches happens to be the largest printable size for a professional printing press, but we're still just trying to make something that's around 8 by 10 or larger, not 30 by 40 inches. Okay, now when I do that, notice what happens in PhotoP is I get back the things I had previously cropped off. And so that's to remind you that in PhotoP, even when you crop an image, it's still holding pixels in its memory. So the only way to get rid of crops is to crop it and then save it. Okay, but this is fine. This just makes sure that I have enough space on the inside for it to be print quality. And now I have a background that I can fill with gray, so I don't have to look at this checkerboard all the time. And I do that by creating a new layer, saying edit fill with middle gray. Edit fill 100% normal, middle gray, and then push that behind my sketch layer. And then I'm going to lock both of those so I can't accidentally mess with them. Now I am ready, because now I'm at 9,000 by 12,000 pixels, because that's what 30 by 40 by 300 looks like. So everyone should eventually be working on a workspace that's 9,000 by 12,000 pixels, with their image a good size in the middle. Now I can bring in my reference, and I'll bring in my head, and I'll immediately, while it's still a smart object, kind of rotate it. And I notice that my head isn't exactly the right angle, right? It's in profile instead of in three-quarter view. So maybe I bring in this other head. And I can even scale it up a little bit. You want to scale it while it's still a smart object to make the most use you can of those uh, native resolution proportions. And then I can immediately do a rough cut with my lasso. And I'll use a one pixel feather with a lot of overlap. So I'm going to get a lot of the neck in there. And I want that tongue in there. I'm going to do a rough cutout with my lasso from the layer I want. Then hit Command J to duplicate it. That automatically rasterizes it. And then I can start playing with, that's the right size. And then I can start playing with this other one underneath it. And I can use Option Command T to transform it, just Command T in Photoshop. And if I want that open mouth to be added on like that, then I'm going to cut that out. So I place it as a smart object. And now I'm just going to get a lot of the neck, get a lot of the overlap. And then hit Command J. And then delete the smart object. And I can start playing with layering these things up. So if I cut out more of this, just with my lasso, my thought is I can use this as the upper jaw and this as the lower jaw on one combined head. But I don't really like the eyes that I have, though that eye is pretty cool. <laughs> so if I want to use that eye, I might do internal compositing, circle around just that eye, duplicate it onto its own layer, and then push that above the other, 
And then I can move that eye independently where I want it for the creature. Because I was wanting this kind of big chameleon eye. And I can even scale it bigger if I want to with option command T. But what I was thinking might be even better was to use these eyes. That's why I have so many different references just for the head. So I bring in the smart object, and then I'm just going to lasso around. Actually, I'll, I might even use these feathered horns. But I might use these eyes. So I'm going to duplicate that. And then use the move tool. And then transform it. Option Command T. I always like to make my creature design composite heads out of at least two different creatures. Two different references, two different animals. And that's to keep them from just looking like I, I put one creature's head, like experimental taxidermy, onto the body of another creature, like a jackalope or something. So not only can I scale and, and rotate, I can also distort. And distort is a really good transform function for this, just like it was for our landscape, because it can make things match in perspective. So now you can see the angle of these two eyes are lining up with the angle of that snout and that tongue. And now it's just about getting the angle of, of this mouth to work. So I can do Option Command T, and I can try Distort. And of course, it can't create pixels, right? But it can kind of open that mouth and turn it around a little bit in a way that will look like it will be more connected once I clean up all these edges. All right, so that's a rough kind of cutting and placing of my head elements. Already, I have one, two, three, four layers that are all contributing potentially to this head. I think this eye, I was unsure whether I wanted to use. Let's see. Let me layer it up. There we go. I think I'll probably go with that red eye instead. Yeah, so I'll get rid of that layer. So it's made up of three layers. Now, I'm going to use the metaphor for this project. Just like I use the metaphor of collage for the landscape project, I'm going to use the, the metaphor of building a car for this assignment. Because a car isn't usually built all by one person in one place. A car is usually assembled by different people in different areas of the factory. And then at the end, it's all bolted together onto a chassis. The most important part of a car is the engine. And like Ferraris are famous because the engines are always hand built, right? You want the, the engine of your animal to be the head. The head is what has all the personality. It's the focal point of your creature. So that's why I'll always use more details, more textures on the head. And then the rest is just a chassis that the head gets attached to that has a, a pleasing silhouette. So. I'm going to build the, the body somewhere else. And I'm going to start with what the head connects to. So the head connects through this neck to the chest. So what are my body elements? So I have the chest from this bat. And notice that this is not huge in terms of its native resolution, even though it's from Pixabay. Some Pixabay images are smaller than others. It's much larger than a thousand pixels, but this is about the best I can get from it in terms of scale. So I'm just going to get a lot of overlap with it and then duplicate it, Command J, and then delete the smart object. And I'm just going to build this into this corner, right? So that's my rib cage. It's got the ribs, it's got uh, the collarbone, and the joints that are going to connect to my wings. So then I need wings. can bring these in. 